very good evening, fellow viewers. Welcome once again to another edition of Wachana, English edition brought to you down here by Sina Daily. My name is Mio Adlan and it is a pleasure to be with all of you once again. Our monthly edition over here where we dissect into whatever that is happening, whatever that is trending and whatever that is worth to talk about. And that is happening here in Malaysia in English edition for our international viewers as well as for the English speaking viewers as well. So we have a very, very, very interesting topic that we have brought for brought to you guys for today specifically. I, I just want to talk about abbreviations a bit because who doesn't love abbreviations? You got ABS, you got BSB, you got ASP, so on and so forth. And another abbreviation that has been going around lately within our nation is 3R. No, I'm not talking about reduce, reuse and recycle. No, that's another bit of the 3R. And no, I'm not talking about that show during your younger times where you watch on the TV, there's this show called 3R. We're not talking about that, but we're talking about race. We're talking about religion and we're talking about royalty. It has been the headline recently, this particular 3R, because, well, the state elections is coming up. If you guys have been living under the rock, unfortunately, a lot of things are going to be happening within these next few weeks. Specifically tomorrow is actually the nomination day for the state election 2023, which consists of six states, which are Kelantan, Kedah, Selangor, Terengganu, Penang, and Negeri Sembilan. Uh, another important date as well, August the 8th, is where the early voting will be commencing. And also the polling day itself will be happening on the 12th of August. We won't be touching much about politics today, even though we are, because it is somewhat likely when you discuss about 3R, you kind of like have to bring in the politics side of it because that's where apparently this statement or this phrase has been made famous of within these past few weeks. And to dive in, to digest and to dissect, as mentioned, this very, very interesting topic about finding middle ground for 3R conversations, we have a very young panel together with me. I feel so old with them. But nevertheless, they are very experienced. They are very knowledgeable with this. Let me introduce to all of you guys to my furthest left. We have Arina Najwa Ahmad Said, the Bauer Group Asia Director. Arina, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. All right. And in the middle, we have the gentleman in that fancy bate office, Amir Farid Rahim, the KRA Group Political Risk Consultant. Amir, nice to see you. Nice, nice to see you. All too. right. Thanks and also to the gentleman to my left, we have Nathaniel Tan or famously known as Nate, actually the coordinator for Project Bangsa Malaysia. Nate. Uh, Nat, thank you so much for being with us. Delighted to be here, thank you. All right, let's dive in. Because again, as mentioned, 3R, it is a very sensitive topic to discuss when it comes to race, religion and royalty. Especially the fact that we are chasing that uh, 12th of August date where the state elections are going to be held. But before we even go through that, we do want to highlight to our fellow viewers of what has happened quite recently. Um, just to give you guys a bit of a well statement of what has happened. Um, that the caretaker uh, Kedah Menteri Besar Datuk Sri Sanusi Matno was actually arrested under the Sedition Act at 3 a.m. that 3 in the morning and was later charged in court that morning itself. And the authorities uh, have said that he was not responding to calls thus uh, why the arrest actually took place. Now, who would like to kick things off? What is your opinion on this matter? I think Nat has some kind of a burning uh, comment about this one uh, talking to us prior to this. Nat, uh, what do you think about all of this? What's your opinion? Definitely not burning, boss. But <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, uh, let, let me start things off. Start things off by saying, um, you know, I think I think Sanusi is a pretty you know, guy who says a lot of hateful things, very racist things, very divisive things. Okay. I'm, I'm definitely not a fan, right? All right. Um, but you know, the old Voltaire saying, right? I disagree with what you say, but I'll defend your right to say it. You know? um, I, I don't think of this case just in terms of like how, you know, how it applies as regarding Sanusi, but how mm -hmm. anyone you know, who's making comments about, about race, religion, royalty, mm -hmm. right? I mean, I, I, I really don't think that, that, that this kind of heavy-handed treatment is, uh, is, is really the way to go. Is it really necessary? Do you really mm -hmm. need to arrest them? I mean, if someone's not answering your calls at 2 a.m., 2.30, yeah. uh, <laughs> I don't think that's a reason to arrest I mean, it's sleeping time, right? Mm -hmm. you know, so I, I, I think, and you know, 
it is very perplexing, you know, uh, right. in, in the context of like um, in, in the state elections that are coming up. You know, people, people. I think Malaysian voters like to stand up for the underdog. All right. You know, um, the, in no world is Sanusi anywhere close to Anwar Ibrahim, right? All right. But at the same time, you know, you know, we remember what happened in '99 when, mm-hmm. when, when, you know, when you clamped down Anwar that hard. You know, the black eye and all that oppression. Yeah. How did the voters respond? Especially the Malay voters, right? In yeah. like the 1999 elections, right? Correct. It's a severe backlash. Mm-hmm. So you know, you know, I mean, watching this happen just before the state elections, you almost think, is this sabotage? I mean, why yeah. else would you do something yeah. so likely to end in backlash? Yeah, it, it is. It seems a bit overboard when, when, when you think about it. As, as what uh, Nat has actually mentioned, I mean. I mean, like, you know, going to a person a person of interest I might add, at that particular moment in time because he wasn't convicted as of yet, but he was actually brought in at 3 o'clock in the morning. Again, I mean, like, majority of us, unless you were as a bouncer at a club, maybe, like, you'll be asleep at that time. And, and let alone a politician, a Menteri Besar, who is, you know, taking care of his state. I mean, your thoughts? Uh, thank you. You know, I agree with uh, what Matt has said. Uh, there is a perception of heavy-handedness in... Um, the whole issue surrounding um, <clears throat> Sanusi's 3 a.m. arrest. Um, of course, um, again, we politicians, uh, this is a very heated political um, cycle. Sanusi has said a lot of things that he should not probably uh, mm-hmm. have said. And, uh, but having said that, um, it, is, it is the, the way um, uh, the whole thing was handled that I think has... Um, led to severe criticism um, from uh, the public. So I think um, in this in this uh, uh, case, uh, there needs to, we need to make sure that there's due process. Mm-hmm. Due process is followed, um, uh, and there's no double standard um, no, right. in investigations. You don't um, uh, speed up investigations for certain people and do not investigate others. If you're mm. investigating everyone, investigate yeah. everyone. Take the time needed to investigate. So due process in terms of the investigation and then court procedures, let, let, it, let it happen uh, within mm-hmm. uh, due process. But at the same time, uh, politicians uh, need to um, be more responsible. Uh, they know that, of course, you may be representing a race-based party or religious-based party, but... Um, we are talking about Malay. Uh, when you're talking about um, 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 Malaysia, Malaysia politics, the social fabric, the DNA is very multiracial. Mm-hmm. So politicians need to uh, be more responsible in what they say. So probably when we talk about three R: race, religion, and royalty, I think politicians, when they are in public spaces, they should practice another three R, which I think is being respectful, mm-hmm. um, being uh, responsible um, and probably uh, to win votes, you have to be relatable. So that's a, yeah. a different tip altogether. <laughs> but yeah, when you want to talk about three R, race, religion, and royalty, yeah. follow that other yeah. three set of three R. That would yeah. I think uh, that, that's how I want to start yeah. <laughs> this conversation this evening. Respectful, uh, responsible. Uh, res- respectful responsible. And, and relatable. Relatable. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. By the end of the show, I can guarantee all of you viewers at home or wherever <laughs> it is that you are, we're going to have variations of this 3R <laughs> as long as it makes the best <laughs> sense out there to the right yet, at least. Uh, coming to you, uh, our third panel, uh, Arena. Again, mm-hmm. because the fact that uh, the Kedah MB was actually, you know, was arrested under the Sedition Act. Others, there, there's even an ideology or statements out there. People are actually saying that it's an irony since mm. one half of the current administration, uh, this being Pakatan Harapan itself and the Prime Minister, uh, has voiced out against the rule of sedition act. Now, what happened to the whole concept of reformacy here? Isn't it what it was uh, campaigned before, the freedom of speech, wanting to say what you think without having, you know, being caught into all of this red tapes and, and whatnot. What do you think? Right yeah, now? I think firstly, we need to acknowledge that um, currently that administration is now the government. Mm-hmm. And given the fact that the Selangor Royal Office was the one that issued the statement saying that you know, Sanusi was offensive and, they, and that led to the investigation and that led to, to, to the arrest, I think the Prime Minister and the coalition are put in a difficult position mm-hmm. on how to respond to it uh, while also managing that relationship with the monarchy. Yeah. So I think that is they have to kind of change their strategy and not be too behave yeah. op, too opposition like and respond via social media or through a statement. However, following that, if we 
um, you know, if, if people were following Azalina and in cabinet, they brought it up. Yeah. Um, it was brought up and it was discussed. And mm-hmm. there was a sort of consensus or an agreement that there needs to be some change. Mm-hmm. Um, however, possibly narrowed down a little bit more mm-hmm. um, to focus on one R and maybe for the other two R's, which is race and religion, to make it a bit more specific in terms of what those um, offences are. Yeah. So I would say that they acknowledged it the best that they could given the position that they are in, mm-hmm. um, you know, because they are in the am- current administration now. Yeah. However, going back to the point of reformacy, um, I wouldn't say it's as rara <laughs> as it was before out in the streets. Um, like I said, it goes back to their current position. They did what they could yeah. uh, given that they're now in power. Yeah. But uh, Nat, coming back to this, because again, this is the oldest trick in the book if you want to look at it because like regardless whether you're the governing uh administration whether you're the opposition or not it is the oldest trick in the book where anybody would actually use political wise as a you know as as a style or should i say as a tradition to just knock a peg or two down in regards of their opposition it's nothing new isn't it yeah, I've actually thought about this a lot. This is, this is something I, I really is minor little obsession of mine. I think um, in my writings, I've described it a little bit as, you know, the, the, when, when you change government, mm-hmm. the actors swap roles, mm-hmm. but the script remains the same. <laughs> yeah, you know? okay. It, exactly, exactly, right? And, and, and right. It's, very, it's very perplexing at first, right? But, <clears throat> okay. but, but the more I've looked at it, or you know, the kind of things I've been exposed to, I realise that a lot of it is, is a certain, you could say, is path dependency. Mm-hmm. Like I said, it's the way things are always, the way things have always been done. Sure. The way the government always does things, mm-hmm. right? There's politicians and then there's the government, right? Sure. <laughs> so, and, and, and you notice that when, when politicians become the government, it's like a, it's like a huge centre of gravity. It's like a little black hole onto itself, right? Mm-hmm. And once you enter into that orbit, you just follow that orbit. Yeah. You know, you come in, a lot of people come in with ideas. I want to do things differently, yeah. do things differently. Some don't even come in with that. Like, some just, you know, <laughs> right? you're, you're All right. just, just, just carried by the currents, right? And mm-hmm. it, it, it's... It's very. It's a little bit sad. Right? It, it, it makes me worry a little bit. And this, this is an example. Like you, you, you would think that all these people who have been on the wrong end of the sedition right. act so many times, right? Mm-hmm. You know, back in those days, I mean, we are all, you know, I mean, people like me in opposition during BN days, right? We, every, every time an arrest like this would happen, we would say, uh, the, the government only arrests you when they don't have an intelligent reply to what you have to say. Mm-hmm. You know, and the sedition act is particularly, you know, yeah. uh, very vaguely worded. A lot of things that I've written, I've tweeted, can mm. be considered seditious if you, you know, okay. you know, you, you, you anything <laughs> on camera right now, lying, yeah. yes, okay. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, it, it, it can, I mean, depending on how sure. you interpret it, it, it's too broad. That's mm-hmm. always been the problem with the Sedition Act. So, you know, I don't think it, it bodes well. I mean, there are other, there are other you know, acts in the penal code, other provisions that allow you to really, if people are inciting violence and things like that, right? Um, yeah. So, I, I think, I think it's, it's, it's troubling. Yeah. yeah. We'll definitely dive into that a bit more, not the astrology bit, but of course, the topic at hand, what we're talking about today, about the three R's, race, uh, religion, as well as royalty. I I do want to come back to you, uh, Ariza, the fact that you've actually mentioned in the cabinet, it was actually discussed uh, by the law minister, Datuk Sri Azalina Othman, uh, has actually said uh, that the cabinet has agreed that changes should be made to limit the Sedition Act 1948's use to only matters involving royalty. Now, where is this coming from? Is it, is it something that is just being plucked out in the, uh, off in the, uh, of the air? And does it benefit the rakyat at the end of the day? Because again, all these laws, all these acts are for the rakyat and how we are to live our lives. What do you think? I think, um, going back to what Nat said earlier, in terms of once you're in government, then you realise your priorities change. So I think this is kind of the first step to a progressive move to have better conversations around the Sedition Act. I think conversations around challenging the royalty may have been difficult um, to completely say that, yes, it's free for all, you know, Mm. like, you know, let's copy what Thailand is doing right now and just let the people attack um, the royalty. I think they're not that ready yet um, for that kind of scenario. So I think, hence, um, race and religion could be some bull, mm-hmm. um, um, probably a compromise or a middle ground to go and say that, look, this is where we can have a lot more conversations mm-hmm. on, especially because there are a lot of existing standards internationally, right? Yeah. So you have hate speeches globally, yeah. um, uh, laws, um, anti-discrimination laws, um, you know, and, and especially these are the things that you can benchmark against. So royalty is very case-by-case basis. Sure. So I feel this is, uh, granted, it's it would have been great to have a more comprehensive or holistic view on the Sedition Act, 
Mm -hmm. for all the three R's, yep. but this is definitely a progressive move forward. Yep. If I may jump in yeah. just a little please, bit, please, you know, uh, first of all, uh, Arcelina is a pretty dynamic, interesting yeah. leader to watch. She's got a great staff and everything. And now uh, this uh, race, religion, royalty, we say three R, right? Mm -hmm. But I, I tend to think of it a little bit more as two plus one R. You know? okay. uh, I, I, think, I think race and religion are similar. It's like the two oranges and one apple kind of thing. <coughs> okay. right? you know, they, they, race and religion talk a lot about, you know, have a lot to do with identity, you know, and, mm -hmm. and, and plays more in day-to-day -day life. Whereas mm -hmm. royalty is, is kind of a different, different fish because it's not so much in the daily fabric of your lives, you know, if you're a normal rakyat right, yeah, and things like that. So I mean, it's just something that I think sure. is useful to keep in mind. Yeah, and, and, and what you have said just now, uh, Nat, uh, I do want to go back to you, Ame, is that, yeah, because like, again, now nowadays especially, you know, with within not just Malaysians, but all around the world, people would have social medias where they would express their opinions yeah. very seamlessly mm. because everything is at the, you know, at the end of your fingertips. And mm. the thing is, this, your speech, any kind of speech out there, is actually can be very subjective. Not everything is all in black and white because what you read doesn't really mean of what you're expressing. It has no intonations to it. It has no, uh, no feelings to it. Because if you read not a sentence, it's just going to be that. And even if you mean it as a joke, sometimes people don't get it uh, as a joke. So my question is that the, the issues of freedom of speech is being questioned over here and how can we ensure that it is not being abused and, and, and exploited if the new amendments should take place, uh, as what we have just discussed. I mean, Yes, um, I, uh, adding on to what uh, our two speakers have said also, uh, when we look at the Sedition Act, you also have to look at this amendment to the Sedition Act yeah. in 2015 yeah, that has made it tighter under former Prime Minister <laughs> Najib Raza, who actually promised to... Um, to repeal the act in uh, 2011 or 2012, if I, 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 I remember correctly, but then went on to make it um, even uh, harsher. Um, so there's, uh, to add to the social media elements, I remember at that time in 20, 2015. So um, <clears throat> therefore, uh, the, the, the 1948 act, is there already a draconian yeah. uh, act that was, sure. uh, that was in place before pre-independence, yeah, for mm -hmm. uh, to counter insurgencies, but it has been updated in 2015, a uh, very recent, to accommodate for the changing um, landscape uh, of uh, social media. So, apart from okay, that's the legal solution. Going for mm -hmm. the law, um, uh, we have to have stronger uh, 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 act and all that, uh, yeah. a newer act, but uh, it must be supported by a more uh, conducive uh, policy ecosystem, uh, a combination of education mm -hmm. uh, to make sure that uh, the general public... F first, it's very difficult to have education and engagement because, <laughs> because the um, Seditious Act is quite broad um, mm -hmm. and very flexible in whoever who uses it. So, there needs to be first... On the act, I think there needs to be safeguards to this act. That's one part. And okay. two is educating and engaging uh, the wider public to understand um, uh, not just the act, but to understand that we live in a multiracial society mm -hmm. and therefore there are certain uh, ways that we should conduct ourselves in discussion with regards to race, religion, royalty or other uh, uh, sensitive topic um, and without losing the the intellectual kind of like robustness yeah. um, and um, honesty in the discussion wow. so it's 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 it's, a, it's yeah. very difficult but it's multi-layered yeah. and you need to to look at the root cause um, um, of it and start from schools for example yeah. start with your community start with yeah. your family yeah definitely we definitely have to start somewhere it is getting heated over here it is definitely getting discussed over here on this particular topic the topic about 3r next we're going to be asking about why the need to talk about 3r but yeah we're going to take a short break first do not go anywhere please stay within our orbit and no we'll be back with you guys in a minute here on watching our english edition stay with us
again, Brigada Nasional seems to be a better party, a cleaner party. Uh, even we have prepared ourselves to be ready uh, to continue the struggle of AMNO. So we like to invite AMNO's members uh, who are not happy with their uh, situation, the leadership situation. Please, you can migrate to PN at any time. For next gen, mainly, basically, our vision is for families to come here and they create happy memories together as well as one. Because it's a whole family theme park, one thing. And also, this is one of the largest indoor theme park. It's about 43,000 square feet. Wow, that's big! Thank you so much for staying on still with us here on Wachana English Edition talking about Find a Middle Ground for 3R Conversations together with our, as mentioned, young and vibrant and knowledgeable panelists we have over here. We have Nat, we have Amir together with Arena as well. Yep, we spoke about space, we spoke about fruits, we spoke about fish, but now we want to talk about more about 3R, race, religion and royalty. Nat, as what you mentioned earlier, it shouldn't be 3R, it should be 2 plus 1. But regardless of that, why do we need to talk about it? Why do we need to know more about this? Nah. But thanks, boss. You know, I, uh, so the, the trend nowadays, right? You always hear from the government, don't you dare touch on 3R or we'll hmm. come after you. you know, police, yeah. will, you know, police car going to be outside your door, that kind of thing. You know, again, I, I, I'll leave aside royalty for, for the time being. I talk okay. mainly about race and religion, This is the right? first two hours. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, okay. and, and you know, there, there, is a, there is a sense in Malaysia that these are things that are taboo, right? You yeah. don't bring this up in polite society or talk about it at, the, you know, at dinner parties. It's just a no-no, right? Mm -hmm. But you think about it, right? The analogy I like to, I like to use, right, is this. We've done fruits, space, nah? now we go to family, lah, okay? okay? That's just family, father, mother, let's say kids, right? maybe a... Uh, Rachel um, and uh, Joseph, right? Uh, okay. The kids, okay? So, you know, let, let's say like, you know, Rachel feels all this while like, you know, oh, daddy always prefers uh, Joseph, right? Because he's a boy, you know, and, mm. and everything is always, always goes to him. And maybe Joseph feels like, oh, mama always likes Rachel, you know, every, all, the, all the attention, all the love, all the money always goes to her, right? Okay. And there's this like, this real resentment among the children, right? right? It's, it's, a, it's a problem, you know, it's causing strife, it's coming out in different ways, right? And you know, what's the solution? Never talk about it. Don't ever mention this. Don't ever bring it up. Okay. How do you think that family is going to end up? Yeah. It's, it's, you know, it, 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 a lot it, of repressed feeling. Exactly. <laughs> you know, it's a lifetime of therapy, right? Um, <clears throat> and that's that's Malaysia for the last sixty years, lah. Don't mm -hmm. talk about it, right? Okay. And, and then what's worse is that you know, yeah, lah. Daddy will go to jo uh, Joseph or Rachel and say, yeah, you know, I think you know, Mama prefers, uh, <laughs> and you hassle one another, right? Yeah, pit one against the other. Okay. Yeah, this is what's been happening, and, and it's right. it, 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 yeah. the solution. Mm -hmm. Really, don't talk about it. No, I, I think that the solution is, is about how we talk about it. Yeah. And how we've talked about it for the last 60 years is, uh, you know, that one got everything, we getting nothing. Uh -huh. And the other person is saying, you know, Rachel is saying, that one getting everything, I getting nothing. Joseph okay. is saying, that one getting everything, I getting nothing. Yeah. Both can't be true, right? Doesn't make yeah. any sense at all. Right. It's yeah. not logic. It, it, it makes no sense. But if, if we keep shouting like that, shouting past one another, mm -hmm. you'll never have any real meaningful yeah. conversation. Instead, why don't we try respectful, responsible, relatable, yeah, right? You know, like, uh, um, you know, real person-to-person you, you. person feelings. Mm -hmm. You know, if you've ever been through like couples therapy and things like that, right? right? They, they tell you to use I statements. I feel this, you know, when okay. you do this, it makes me feel like that. You know, this kind of, you know, they, they've done it, you know, uh, ideas in Malaysia and a couple of uh, different organizations, they have different kind of conversations. Mm -hmm. We set the context a little bit differently. You, you, you use slightly different words. You, you know, you really meluahkan perasaan lah. Talk about yeah. your feelings, Expressing right? How, how you really feel. Yeah. I think that's the, that's, I think we need to talk about race and religion, but we yeah. need to try and do it in a way that's a bit more constructive. Sure, all right. No, I yeah. uh, would like to butt into what uh, add on to what uh, Nat said. No, I totally agree. And if political parties find it very so good, the ones that is pushing this is obviously the, the politicians <laughs> and the political parties mm -hmm. with their with their stance, right? Which is not wrong because as long as it is not illegal to have a party based on one's race yeah. and one's religion, mm. uh, it is a democracy and it, it allowed then. They can they can speak and uh, whatever that they think represent uh, their vote base, but uh, often the time I find that uh, 
uh, when it, the issue becomes too political and the political parties themselves can't find a middle ground mm -hmm. uh, in talking about this thing, we need to empower um, an honest, again, an, an independent, uh, fed uh, sort of uh, civil, uh, civil, civil society. Civil society needs to be the arbiter uh, okay. when it comes to the discussion on uh, race and religion because you can't give it to the political uh, parties because they will want to maximize political yeah. mileage. Correct. So this is, I, I think, uh, and they're fan, uh, to an fanning the fire to galvanize support. It's, it's to totally understandable whether or not we accept it. It's, it's, mm. it's, that's up to the voters and how they, they, yeah. they vote, right? Um, so therefore, they needs, in order to have an honest discussion, they need to empower civil society and civil society must be politically independent. Mm -hmm. and they cannot be affiliated yeah. and then you wear the uh, civil society mask and talk about it. Yeah. We need to have a mature, honest conversation right. like what uh, Nat said uh, just now. Analogy about I love Nat's uh, analogy yeah. and I'm thinking about Rachel right now. <laughs> so, so, so am I. Are you not coming to you? I mean like, you've been to couples counselling? No, I, no. I know couples counselling has been talked about here. But again, maybe you should. Should I? I need to think about it now. Yeah. But, but when you talk about this 3R or 2 plus yeah. 1 as what Nat has uh, famously tagged over here, Funny enough, as also what Amir has actually mentioned as well, this thing only came about because of the fact that we're having a state election soon. I mean, it, it's almost drawn into that conversation where we didn't have this issue at all uh, previously, but now the fact that, you know, we're going to be you know, going to the ballots and, and, and somebody needs to be the MP and whatnot, hence why this thing is now being blown up and, and being talked more, or should I say not talked more, yeah. because of the restrictions and whatnot. Your thoughts on this? Yeah, I think we talked about it a little bit when we kind of can already predict these kind of scenarios closer to big events like mm. elections. Mm. So then that begs the question of who created this muscle, yeah. right? That created this muscle that it becomes okay for people to use these as tactics closer mm. to elections. And I think if we go back in history, um, people vote who they want to vote, mm. right? So, I mean, you have, as long as it's allowed to have race-based political parties, and if that's what people care about, yeah. then they will continue to vote race-based political parties or religion-based political parties. And the reason why politicians use that against them is because we don't have these nuanced conversations. And sometimes it's a vicious cycle. You don't want to have, you don't want them to have nuanced conversations or honest conversations because then you can leverage on this and use it mm. to gain political mileage. Mm -hmm. So this is where the challenge is because I think now we've used it so much and it becomes so ingrained in us yeah. and it's so it's become a muscle that we don't know how to have these conversations anymore and we don't want to have these conversations anymore and it becomes reductive mm -hmm. um, so I think it's really important in this sense because Malaysia 50, 20 years ago is very different from a Malaysia now. People are yes. a lot more interracial. We have a lot more interracial couples. How people perceive themselves yeah. and their race and their religion is completely different as well. So now what we're actually having an issue with is how do we define ourselves now? How mm -hmm. am I a modern Malay? As a yeah. modern Malay, what do I believe in now? Yeah. As a modern Muslim, what do I believe in now? And if we don't challenge that and force the politicians to talk about these things, mm. they will continue. To, def to define our identity to, politics should be in Malaysia. Correct. Yeah. Because yeah. it's not wrong, to, like you said, to define yourself based if I'm a Malay, I'm a Malay, I'm a Muslim, Muslim, if I'm Chinese, whatever. Right? But it's then what comes after that? Is Does it stop there? No, mm -hmm. of course not. So I think that's where, yeah, we need to have, it's yeah. still important to have these conversations. That, yeah. If I may, a little bit, yeah, you know, I, I think uh, Irina is uh, you know, alluding to this kind of chicken and egg kind of thing, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I, I talked about path dependency. So when, I've said this so many times, it gets boring. But, you know, when Malaysia was born, right, we had, yes, Malay party, Chinese party, Indian party, right? Mm -hmm. And, and you know, if you're a Malay party, right, if it's right there in your name or Chinese party, whatever, you know, it's Chinese Association, Indian Congress, right? It's right there in your name and you start to, everything becomes racial in your mind. You know, mm -hmm. we say don't mm -hmm. politicize race and religion. I like to say that in Malaysia, we have racialized politics, not politicized, politicized race, right? Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, and, and it, sh it shapes your thinking in that way, you mm -hmm. know, and, and you become too used to it. Nah. It's a muscle that you don't know how to, you don't know how to do otherwise, right? Mm -hmm. And as you know, um, uh, Amir talked about, uh, about um, civil society, right? Uh, and I think uh, Irina and I both did a little bit of work with uh, Tan Sri Nazir Razak, you know, and, and Dr. Husam as well from, uh, from Sina, right? And they, they, they both recognize this idea of like the need to take things offline. 
mm-hmm. you know, because you know that the political process has just gotten way yep. too toxic and, and wrapped up in itself, right? Mm-hmm. So maybe one of the only way, one of the only solutions is to is to have a conversation that's uh, uh, you know, um, separate from that space, okay. you know, somewhere where you can really you know dive into this kind of nation building things. Mm-hmm. So it's like the, some of the work that you know this project Bangs Malaysia does with Abim mm-hmm. on one side with Dong Chong, with Chinese Assembly Hall, with the East Malaysian organizations, right? Yeah. That, that's trying to build what we what what, what we want the future of Malaysia to look like. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, but uh, um, taking what uh, Nah has mentioned, I mean, it's easier said than done, though, because again, we've been living in this society, in this kind of thinking, as mentioned before, a Malay party for the Malays, a Chinese party for the Chinese, Indian for the Indians. This has been integrated within ourselves since our forefathers before, back in the 40s, uh, 50s, and whatnot. And and it is hard for the younger generation, the the one that matters right now to actually move forward and, and making it a conducive, let alone a, a rewarding time uh, as we are right now, I mean, Well, yeah, that, that is true because well, the, the young ones absorb things very easy, mm. easy, more uh, easily than others and their opinions are shaped from what the experiences of their parents. And But now with social media, they're learning um, all different things uh, from all around the world. So if you talk to an eight-year-old now, yeah. They're very knowledgeable about what's happening in the U.S., uh, mm-hmm. what's happening around the world, and they are seeing uh, um, um, kinds of um, um, anti-hate. They understand uh, anti-hate crime, mm-hmm. um, uh, for example, and they can tell parents, oh, you shouldn't be saying things like that. I'm, mm-hmm. My nephews um, do that okay. uh, all the time uh, to, to our adults and, and in our families. So over time, things uh, will change. But this is, again an intergenerational responsibility. Mm-hmm. So, um, uh, if we... Th- this goes back to education, right? Yeah. And and uh, engage social engagement in having this, this very difficult conversations which we need to have, uh, but have it honest, uh, honestly, transparently, as accountable as, 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 as possible. And it's every generation has a role to play here sure. so that we do not have a generation that grows up in hostility, uh, like a uh, fear, mm. uh, atmosphere of fear, ecosystem of uh, he- uh, hatred. Uh, we need to put a, uh, a, sp- a break on this, a stop yeah. to this, if, if uh, at all uh, possible. But then again, as, as we said, you know, identity politics is always, it's the, the um, um, easiest way out for those who don't want to talk yeah. about difficult issues. Yeah. There are other things, sorry, sorry, if political parties can focus on on uh, economic policies that cut mm-hmm. across races, for instance, if they refocus, rechannel their full energy to talking about the policies and not uh, uh, easily reach out to race and religion cut, mm-hmm. then we would probably have um, a more an uh, easier time in managing um, these, yeah. these uh, difficult conversations. So again, I know I've talked a lot about it's about politicians and political parties because yeah. at the end of the day, it's yeah. their respons- it's, it's their respons- responsibility. Uh, am I putting the blame on them for fanning it? Not them alone, but okay, there are others with vested interests who may be sure. trying to incite this. Right. So um, long, we have to go back again to Leadership, yep. leadership, leaders of political parties mm-hmm. must um, try their very best to discipline the parties yep. um, and refocus on things that matter most. Because even if you look at polls, uh, we've conducted our own uh, research into um, uh, issues that matter in elections, right? Um, race and religion do matter, but yep. it's always third, fourth issue. Economic issues and, uh, and related economic issues, as, such as it depends on, on, on that particular cycle. Is it unempl- uh, more employment opportunities? Mm-hmm. Is it low wage? Like currently, there's a yeah. lot of talk about low wage because of uh, inflation problems. Five years ago, housing was uh, mm-hmm. a, a big issue. So this will always come up in the first, in the top three, whereas race and religion is four and five. But why do we see in political cycles yeah. race and religion issue in Charama circuit and all that? becomes a top priority. Exactly. Speaking about economy, again, that's what we Malaysians want. We want a better economy for the riot, for ourselves to make sure that we are 
staying relevant and able to actually put food on the table at the end of the day because that's what every Malaysian wants. Touching about uh, education as well and economy, uh, Ariza, a lot of issues are also intertwined with all of this hype about 3R. You talk about race and you talk about the economic state, you know, the, 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 the rich Chinese or the poor Malays and whatnot, or even like education as well. There have been a lot of issues that has been raised. But how are we to approach this matter for us to be totally or at least catered to every single aspect uh, there is? Because like it or not, we, we are still there. We, as mentioned, we can't run away from that. How, how yeah. do we approach this? It's definitely very complex. And I can hear the sigh. No... In the <laughs> no, I guess it's an age-old, it's an age-old issue, right? Yeah. At least for Malaysia. <clears throat> because number one, we have to acknowledge politics and business or government and business are intertwined. Mm -hmm. So because of that, we have to acknowledge that sometimes the government's agendas when it comes to race and religion also sometimes seep in through into policies and into businesses, right? So if you're looking at government-linked companies or um, government or state-owned companies, issues like ASB, for example, that's clearly also very racially linked, but also tied in into economy. Mm -hmm. So then I think what needs to happen here is number one, acknowledgement and clarity in terms of what are actually our objectives. If we do acknowledge that there are certain communities in Malaysia that are being prejudiced against continuously mm -hmm. um, because of their race or because of their religion, that needs to be acknowledged. Hence, what's the other criteria? Those who have benefited from it, who are from that race, like say the rich Malays, what then do we do with that? Yeah. So do you then afford or get these incentives because you're a Malay or because you have been prejudiced? Right, mm -hmm. and use and you and because of that historical background that you have, so I think there needs to be a very clear objective. And third, it's what's the check and balance, because mm -hmm. especially when you're talking about affirmative affirmative action, right? Um, I mean, I'm just talking about it because it is very much intertwined um, in terms of policies. Typically, even in other countries like in the US or South Africa, who also have affirmative action policies, typically the ones that benefit the most are the ones of the middle, in middle income group because they have accessibility. They are yeah. aware of these incentives in comparison to those of the B40 group. So I think it's definitely not a one size fits all, but there needs to be clarity and objective um, for to, to resolve this. Second is what are the checks and balances that we can kind of Im input so that we can mitigate you know, people abusing that system yeah. um, or abusing some of these incentives and economic policies. Because, of course, we have a needs-based approach. That's poverty eradication. That can be cut across all. But then when it comes to very tenuous issues where you see people systematically being, you know, removed from the economic system based on race, gender, religion, what have you, then that's where the conversation of race needs to be honest, like what we talked about earlier and right. a lot more nuanced. Yeah. Sure. Wow. We are definitely... You know, diving and dissecting more into this particular topic. Uh, we are definitely going to be taking a short break for a while. Uh, you know, even though that the solution has mentioned it may not fit everyone, but we fit you in regards to getting the information out. Stay with us here. We'll be back in a minute here on Wachana English Edition. No, for me, yeah, I'm not regretting at all. I'm happy to be in the other party yeah. because uh, Amno is so uh, uh, entrenched into uh, uh, like corruption practice, you know, and then running away from the very principle they have advocated many years ago. Is our main one attraction. This is a ninja challenge.
thank you so much for still staying on with us here on Wachana English Edition where we are transparent here at Sina Daily. We want to give you all of the discussions out there as transparent as we possibly can, talking about all the hottest topics around and what my, uh, what, what is hotter than we want to talk about the three R? Again, it is not the reuse, reduce and recycle thing. It is about race, religion and royalty. Before we move on to our third block, uh, Nat, you do have something that you, add, add, you want to add on of what uh, Ariza has actually mentioned just now. Please. Hmm. Sometimes these panels, I find everyone agrees with each other and get boring a bit. So maybe I disagree just a little bit if you don't mind. Sure. Just a little bit, a, a thought, you know. It's like one of the things you said was about, you know, politicians must be responsible. I mean, of course, in theory, I agree, you know. Mm. But I find that, I find that I think in Malaysia, we have a little bit of a over-dependence on, on, on politicians, right? We think, that, you know, we need to, you know, we, like, we look to them to solve the problems, which mm -hmm. is a logical and understandable, I mean, that's theoretically their job, right? Mm -hmm. but for me, over the years, I, I think this this... I don't know. I, I'm not sure whether it is the best place to put our hopes. You know, um, <laughs> I, I find I find that you know if if you know because I think for 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 politicians, right? Race and religion is a little bit like an arms race. Mm -hmm. You know, if if my enemy is doing it, I don't do it. Habis. I cannot. Okay. So it, they're forever trapped in that cycle. You know, mm -hmm. that they have to one up on each other. It's a racial one up mm. manship, right? Race <laughs> to the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not even to the top. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> race to the bottom. Race to the bottom. <laughs> 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 so, so I, I think again now, you know, one of the ways that you know you need a group of people to show how it can be done, uh -huh. how you can talk about, and and you know, in, when it comes to like, so again, this idea of Bangsa Malaysia, right? Mm -hmm. what, what, the, the, the whole idea of this is what unites us, you know. And I, we, I, we always believe that there is much more that unites us than divides us, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But politicians only talk about what divides us, because that's that's how you get votes, right? Yeah. I'm different from this other group, you know, Correct. right? So, so and if, if we can have a group that is focused on 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 building our commonalities and mm -hmm. and 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 trumpet our commonalities for exactly the things that you guys were talking about economy you know well-being justice you know these kind of things that, that all Malaysians can get behind right mm -hmm. so I, th I think that's that's the direction in which there is uh, excitement you know you, you ask you know is, is change possible I 1000% believe it's possible that we can break free from all this old stuff mm -hmm. the only question is whether we're going to do it and whether those of us who are not in this not trapped in this cycle are, mm -hmm. are we able to get our act together are we able to really come together on these things build a momentum and you know sort of like that's, that's the question I think that's, that's interesting yeah. and the question is right now then actually where can we find the middle ground because again like, like what you have mentioned, it, 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 I mean, like I, yeah, I can understand where you're coming from because, again, when everybody's talking about this and nobody's taking the lead about this and when people actually use it, they would just use it to their advantage. But ultimately, where can we draw the line? Or is it just as simply as just drawing a line on the sand because it keeps on moving every single day, uh, mm -hmm. Anita? Yeah, uh, it definitely is difficult and I think that's why the legal route is, you know, I think that's where they're looking at to kind of draw that line. So mm -hmm. having laws or amendments to the Sedition Act or improvements on it, uh, because that's what laws are for, right? So socially yeah. engineer new behaviours and good behaviours uh, moving forward. And it's, to be fair, it's also a reflection of the current times, right? Mm -hmm. It's also a response to what the society has been saying. You know, people now are a lot more active on social media. They are also a lot braver in calling out um, institutions and mm. holding them accountable. So it's both. So I think that line has already starting to be drawn. Mm -hmm. um, it's just now how do we institutionalize it and then make it a new muscle mm -hmm. um, moving forward. So I think it will definitely be progressive. The legal route is definitely one. Civil society is definitely another route, but it's going to be very still very complex uh, moving forward because race, religion, and royal. I mean, at least race and religion are a lot more abstract. Yeah. Um, you know, in terms of how people associate themselves mm. with it. There's yeah. only so much that the yeah. legal route can set the framework. Yeah. Um, but uh, the, 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 the shape of how things are going to move forward, uh, it's still, I think, very fluid because it's a very complex uh, mm -hmm. discussion. Um, but having said that, um, I'm, I was just thinking, like, if there, there is, it, it's kept, like, the cancel culture, mm. right? So if, uh, I know it's a very Western um, concept, and especially among the, the young ones. Sure. Uh, but if, in, say, in 20 years, that generation grows up to be in yeah. position of power, um, and, that, uh, and, and that whole uh, approach uh, takes a very local-rooted concept, probably mm -hmm. we would be able to reach a situation, uh, a, 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 an, a, an environment where automatically you would push aside those with 
uh, certain um, uh, agenda along mm -hmm. the r race and religion um, line. Mm -hmm. um, so what I'm trying to say, again, the problem with it, if you look at it in, in, in the political uh, sense, it's also supply and demand, right? Like, um, yeah. th there's demand for that type of politics. There is like, plenty of supply because it's the easiest way to get, uh, to get support. But if we build up the individual, we build up the community to, like, call out or yeah. check and balance mm -hmm. and all that, I think there is hope in us uh, pulling the conversation back to the middle. Finding yeah. that that middle ground, it may not be center, yeah. Okay. yeah. But it needs to move from the extreme okay. right or the extreme left that it could it could it could sway. Okay, controversial here. I mean, like the fact that we are discussing this at length and we are still having a lot of complications trying to figure out where the middle ground is. Should we just abolish it altogether then? Just put it aside, be gone with it, and hey, be like how they are in the states. You know, everything is free. You can talk about anything about anyone. Well, I mean, um, you know. I, for me, where do you draw lines, right? Mm. I think some simple ways is like, you know, I, I draw the line at inciting violence. I don't believe you should mm. say, sure. let's kill Mio because we don't okay. like him. I mean, that's... I mean, that's... We're against violence. You know, I, 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 yeah. I, I used to be a maths teacher, tuition teacher, right? You mm. know, and I like things that are easy to define. Okay. Right? That's easy to define. You don't incite violence. You don't say, sure. let's harm these people, right? Mm -hmm. But other than that, a lot of it is, 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 pretty, is, pretty, is pretty vague. But I don't think we need very, very clear definitions. I have, slight, I have some agree, some slightly different. Okay. Uh, different. I, I, I'm also not a big fan of like the legal route. Like we, we, we legislate... You know, I mean, social engineering, that, I think that's original intent of laws. But nowadays, if you ask me, I'm biased as well. I'm, I work in communications, right? So I think social engineering happens from communications, right? The kind of, the kind of uh, what, what kind of world you want to envision, you know? Mm. So, so I, know I feel like, uh, you know, supply and demand. Right? For me, mm. I, I, my personal belief, I don't believe there's a demand for race, racial, religious politic, politicking. I don't think people wake up in the morning and like, oh, I wish you had more race and religion divisiveness, right? That's, that's not mm -hmm. what they want. But it's, you know, <laughs> supply and demand, in my line of work, we create demand, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, that's not how, you don't sell products that people need. Yeah. You, you make them believe that's what they need, right? That's yeah. the hassle that we, that we do. Like. <laughs> yeah, okay. You know, it's, it's terrible, terrible <laughs> no, <laughs> madman, no, no. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. But, you know, so, but I, I believe that the government, I mean, you know, again, we don't rely solely on them, but they, have, they are uniquely positioned to really change the narrative, right? And again, 60 years, we've been like, race is the narrative. Mm -hmm. That is the narrative, the political narrative of the country. And from there, it seeps into every aspect of our lives, right? Mm -hmm. And if you really wanted to, you can totally change it. I mean, you, you can concentrate on different things. Madani is, 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 a, is a, you know, if you really, really study what Madani means, you take some hours to, you know, oh yeah, it's, it's all good stuff. But it's a bit problematic if you like say Madani and people's like up or two, you know, yeah. you know that, that's a bit of but but you know with these kind of ideas, right? Or even one Malaysia back in the day, but it was a great idea, but didn't have the 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 sort of like substance to back it up. But if you really start talking like we are really you know something like a Bangsa Malaysia or we are united people, right? That we are people with yeah. much commonality, so something that goes beyond just the Nasi Lemak. Mm -hmm. Nasi Lemak is all great, but you know you want to yes. do something deeper than that. If, if you really start talking about it, start living it, start showing people what it looks like. Mm -hmm. I think I think that people will be like, oh, I want more of that. You know, I want to feel like I'm a part of a united nation, right? I don't yeah. want to feel like I'm a blah 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 blah, blah all the time. Yeah. All right. Yeah. But but unfortunately, I think what's going to be happening within this next uh, few weeks with the state elections happening, a lot of political parties, uh, uh, yeah, political parties out there. I, I wouldn't say that they will use this tactic, but some of them may be, you know, <coughs> squeezing the likes out of it because mm -hmm. that's what. That's what uh, you will get votes with that. I mean, but, but then again, Mio, yeah. like what uh, transpired with Sanusi mm -hmm. um, also means that all the political parties um, are putting on brakes um, uh, on escalating things further. Mm. So, in a sense, um, the um, uh, what has happened to Sanusi happened before the start of the campaign, which means yeah. that we are hoping that the campaign is going to be a bit more disciplined on yes. this front. That's our hope. That's the mm. hope. Because again, it's all up to the political <laughs> actors and the emotional yeah. tension um, um, uh, that will rise from this very high political temperature that we will uh, face in the next uh, few weeks. But again, um, given what has... Sorry. So given, given how things have played up with um, the Sanusi uh, case, hopefully uh, politicians have learned their lessons and will yeah. will mind what they're going to sp sp 
speak in, in, in public, especially in Chirama uh, forums where the, um, the, the, the emotions run very, very high. Yeah. Because again, uh, uh, Anira, coming back to you, because uh, Datuk Sri Anwar has actually given an ultimatum a few days ago in saying that you know the government will not tolerate such acts or, or such uh, behaviours moving forward, you know, in in any capacity whatsoever. Mm. But is that fine enough? Having getting that ultimatum from PMX, not 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 doing this, or you think people are just going to be creative about this and wanting this to still be an issue for their own benefit? What do you think? Um, I mean, obviously, he has to take a stand. So I think that was his stand, and I think he needed to do that. And I think that's good. Um, however, whether or not um, that will still continue, to be honest, I feel like the politicians will still find creative ways to do mm. it. Because I think what is interesting in the past few, in the past five years, which is different from before, is you have more Malay parties, mm -hmm. right? So now there are alternatives. So you cannot just use the race-based argument yeah. anymore you have to add value and be like, now it goes down to actual policies. Mm -hmm. Okay, create your race-based political party, but what else? I have a few to choose What's from. What's your unique selling What's proposition? What's your unique <laughs> selling point? Previously, it was monopolized, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Now that it's not. So that's where I think they have to be a lot more creative in how they are yeah. selling this race-based argument. It cannot be as reductive as it was before. Yeah. Um, definitely points about policy, economic issues that was raised has to be intertwined into it. And that's yeah. where they need to be a lot more creative and on the ball and on the ground to kind of attract voters. Sure, I want just uh, yeah. one line to add to that. It's just, I want to see the conversation being moved to what if we continue this route and how destructive yeah. it would be for us as Malaysia. People need an awakening to understand that we cannot spend our focus and energy on talking about very divisive issues because mm -hmm. then again, it does affect uh, uh, in the line of work that we are in uh, business confidence, investor confidence in the, in the country and the whole trajectory of, uh, of, of Malaysia as yep. a nation. Yeah, because again, we don't really have to look that far. What happened last year during GE15 as well, there was some collision out there who brought up May uh, 13 as in, uh, mm. you know, as something that they were using to get their votes, to get people to be on their side. And again, coming back to what we have mentioned earlier in the blog, while we're having all this discussion, it has been the talking point since our fathers, since our grandfathers, uh, great-grandfathers moving forward. Why, why, why are we so gullible in this sense? Uh, now, why, why do we keep on pulling ourselves back into this particular topic and not wanting to move on from this? Um, I mean, one way you can analyse it is uh, historically, right? You know, for, mm. for much of Malaysia's history, uh, media is uh, controlled by, by the government, right? Yep. So basically, you know, we, public discourse is whatever the government wants public discourse to be. Whatever they tell the newspapers to write, whatever they tell the TV to talk about, and it trickles down. And again, mm. so government controlled by politicians. Politicians come from race-based parties and think only about race. So race comes from there, top, 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 top. And it becomes in our lifeblood, right? And, okay. and we get used to it. You know, I give an example, right? When 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 uh, Mahathir came to became prime minister in 2018, right? Uh, you know, everyone's like, first time a non-BN government, wow, yeah. right? And we all kind of like waited. What's the new narrative? What's this Malaysia baru that they keep talking about? Waiting, waiting, waiting. All the while we're waiting, Mahathir is plotting how to keep Anwar out of power. So there's no no new narrative, <laughs> right? Uh, mm. And in that in that vacuum, eventually. Eventually, you know, it, it becomes filled by ISIL. When people are uh, waiting around and nothing's happening, no new way, let's just go back to the old ways. Right? Mm -hmm. So again, there's a, there's a, you know, what we lack is, is, is a vision, an example. Mm -hmm. right? and, and, and again, I think if we keep waiting for politicians to do it, um, you know, um, but maybe it's the kind of thing, it, I feel it doesn't need to come. It, it can be done outside if there's enough willpower, if there's enough people who are willing to kind of like come together and say, let's, let's, let's show them what it would look like if, if Malaysians were focused on something besides race and religion and all these kind yeah. of things all the time. Yeah, and, and, and funny enough, again, moving forward, um, a lot of politicians, even, even right now, they would like to incite hate and they would like to actually intensify such notions for their own benefit. I mean, you have friends in the political seas. I'm not saying that your friends are, you know, like the, the people who are actually... We all this. have no, political no. friends, I would like to know. <laughs> yeah, I don't mind you that. I'm going to respond just a declaration <laughs> over here. But the fact that you are very much into this scene, you've definitely seen it with your own two eyes, what is happening in front of your own eyes, you know, amongst your circle, amongst your friend's circle. Why, why do they keep on doing this? Again, is it the easiest way to get the votes at the end of the day? To convince all those machi and parties out there? Is it that simple? I think, I think yes. Uh, a simple answer is that it's a lazy way to get, to, to get votes. Um, 
And uh, they, they are, um, uh, sir, in, most politicians in private, they're very reasonable, mm -hmm. but uh, they put on a persona on the, in the political mm. arena uh, where they have to pander uh, to their vote base. So this is where pen, uh, we sh you sh politicians should show more leadership in not pandering, but leading the society. I know Nat would not mm. agree with me because you <laughs> don't place so much trust on politicians, <laughs> but in Malaysia, I think there is still a big element that we want to trust what the leaders can yeah. deliver, that, deliver for you. Probably it's lazy thinking from, uh, uh, from, from one point, uh, mm -hmm. but again, uh, I would, these politicians, most of my, my polit political friends, um, even in the nationalist uh, parties or the religious parties, they are very reasonable privately, but they put on that persona in, in, in public as an easy way to get votes. Because if you want to talk about economic issues, real policies, social welfare policies, or any other policy for that matter, it's not easy. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's not easy to be a policy, policy maker. You have to do the research, you have to do the comparative analysis. Mm. And be or, in government. And be system, in, government yeah. to, uh, in government system to understand how yeah. to implement it, right? Okay. So rather than go through that, all that process, I might as well just go on the rhetoric uh, that win me the most votes and get me that MP ship or that Adun ship that pays me so, so and so. So are you saying then, I mean, that it is all just an act then? Most of the politicians out there, no. they're putting up an act, again, for that sympathy act for, for them to get the low-hanging well, fruits. Well, politicians are actors in the public uh, space, in the public arena. Um, so no, well, I think there is disconnect between the, re okay. their, uh, the, 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 the realities um, uh, and what they aspire mm -hmm. to be and what they actually um, <laughs> think uh, uh, privately. Mm -hmm. So um, this is where, again, why I, fa I talk time and time again about leadership. Okay. Because it's, uh, at the end of the day, it's, it's up to them. All right. Matt, you've been raising your hand. Just a little <laughs> bit. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't resist. When no, you, no, no, no. Please, please. When you start talking about is it an act, right? I mean, yeah. I think there's a very simple way to answer this kind of question, right? Let's look at, I mean, you know, in, in, in the old days, like maybe I can't even remember in ancient, ancient days, right? Politicians are defined by their values. I believe this, you know, uh, let's say I, I'm a Republican, so I, I really believe all the Republican things. Or a Democrat, therefore, I believe sure. all the Democrat things, right? You know, I... Over there, it's different now. And here, right, I, I give you an example. Okay, so um, start from Najib and Muhyiddin, right? So Najib, one Malaysia, one Malaysia. Mm. Muhyiddin, upcoming challenger. I am Malay first, Malaysian second, mm -hmm. right? Few years later, DAP is the best. Few years after that, DAP is the worst. So, so which one is it? <laughs> yeah. Now you, I think, got, the question's got Mahate, right? Mahate, you know, uh, before 2018, DAP is the worst. 2018, DAP is the best. <laughs> 2035, DAP is the worst. Right. Hadi Awang, right? 2008, yeah. DAP is the best. Before that, DAP is the worst. After that, DAP, they go running the, the around. Inconsistencies. Uh, so yeah, what do they believe? Yeah. Is it not an act? How can it not be an act? It's, it's yeah. ridiculous to imagine otherwise. <laughs> it is actually a whole telenovela which have been going on for how many seasons, God knows. But again, it, it does impact us as Malaysian as well because as what you mentioned, Ami, it's all about consistency at the end of the day. Regardless of whatever these guys want to talk in front of the camera, what they want to promise, all we want is all about consistency at the end of the day. Uh, Anira, coming to you, because we're talking about consistency, yeah. now where is the consistency then? Because um, we've mentioned earlier on the show that we've talked about Sonu uh being arrested and, and, and how others are being investigated, uh, such as uh, Ling Guang Eng, uh, Hadi Awang, uh, Tun Mahade itself, it should follow suit. And what if, if, the, if the authorities do not want to, well, if they, are, if they fail to do so in regards of prosecuting and, 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 and doing what they have done with Sanusi, where does, where does this lie? Because again, obviously people are going to see favoritism right there and there. Because Oh, one kena, but these guys are like, you know, getting away scot-free or is a bit mm. sensitive, we, they cannot be touched. This is what is making the rakyat so confused so much, yeah. Uh, Nira. Yeah, I think it goes back to the definition of the Sedition Act because it's so broad. Mm. Um, because it's so broad, it's open to interpretation and the person who is offended, it's the burden is on the person who is offended to kind of launch um, an investigation or, or a case. So I think that's where that 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 grey area allows for certain individuals like Don or you know others to kind of probably get away with because number one, it could be that it wasn't 
it wasn't a point where it was too insulting mm. or maybe Tun was smart enough to kind of craft it in a way that makes it more constructive rather than a personal attack maybe okay. um, but then you're right like it could be because then no one was ready to kind of launch an attack mm -hmm. you know in that kind of scenario because of how vague the law is so that's why I wouldn't say necessarily it's favoritism um, mm. It could also be timing. It could also be which institution are you talking about? Because in Sanusi's case, it was very direct. Um, it was also, I think, a lot more widespread. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in comparison to maybe all the others, I think social media also probably play, played a part mm -hmm. um, into all this. Yeah. So I think here the question is: Are there people, you know, offended enough to kind of use the Sedition Act against it? So I think that's that. It's an interesting situation where people who are against the Sedition Act, but also don't like how these conversations are done, you know, when it comes to race and religion, but they probably are also not likely to use the Sedition Act. So that's why we probably need new law, right? right? Or a new kind of policy to go and maybe maybe it's anti-hate speech or discrimination discrimination speech and maybe that, that law applies. Sure. So it's I wouldn't say it's favoritism. I think it's just more of like, is there a perfect storm to kind of launch those yeah. kind of investigations on yeah. those personalities? Yeah. Hence why coming back to our initial start of the conversation, the whole thing tonight is that it is subjective. It, it is, you know, at the eyes of the beholders, how a person would um, translate certain messages, how it's being responded, how it's being conveyed, and how you would interpret it, whether it would be, you know, along the same lines or whether it's yeah. actually above the line or even crossing the line. There, there, there's no certainty in there, hence why the, the, the huge debate about this Sedition Act, uh, about wanting it to be amended or even wanting it to be abolished altogether and everything. Now, now let's jump in a bit more about, uh, again, uh, the state elections will be held on the 12th of uh, August. Hopefully, all of you guys are making yourselves available because it is your responsibility in doing that. Uh, I do want to highlight a bit on the MUDA PSM uh, collaboration here. The, 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 uh, the existence of MUDA and PSM, they have always been shouting or should I say campaigning that they are colorblind and they fought they are fighting for equality it's for everyone out there but yet so many people from other parties anywhere else they are being criticized uh, Muda and PSM they are being criticized so much are the people a reflection of the politicians that uh, have, they are in power actually I mean because again what Muda and PSM are trying to do again we're not for Muda here but Somehow or other, what they're trying to say, they're trying to be super unbiased, but still they're getting hit left, right and centre over here. Well, what's going on here? Yeah, because if you look at the... Uh, both uh, parties were now in lines, and MUDA has been very focused on a lot of pol championing policies. So has PSM in terms of social economic yeah. policies. They've been at it for <laughs> very, very long years. Whether you agree or not with them, but mm -hmm. yeah, they've yeah. been talking about it a lot. So probably there are people who are in the political uh, 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 actor realm who doesn't want uh, policy debates to be at the center of a uh, political uh, discussion? Mm -hmm. So it, it it could be it could be simply simply that. Uh, could they be threatened? Could they feel threatened uh, by too much discussion on uh, uh, on policies? But then again, if you discuss too many uh, too much uh, 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 policy initiatives, you might get lost in not doing anything. Yeah. Um, at the end of the day, it needs to reflect political realities um, as well. But probably back to what you you were alluding to. I think uh, um, some people find policy discussions boring. Simple yeah. as that. They, it's not it's, sexy it's enough, not, isn't it's it? Not, yeah. it's, it's not highly charged as, uh, yeah. as uh, t talking about race and religion. Yeah. Okay. Uh, our maths teacher, he rose he yes. raised his hands. <laughs> yes. Nat, Nat, please. <laughs> I raised my hand when he said some people find policy discussions boring. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah, that's oh, that's you. Okay. <laughs> no, I mean, like, but, but, but ultimately, uh, guys, that, does that also mean that people, they just don't care about equality then at the end of the day? Because like it or not, as much as you want to shout out to the public, uh, you know, some people out there, they might want to say that, oh, we need to be all equal and whatnot. But deep inside that, oh, no, I don't want people to touch about my Malay exclusivities, you yeah. know, but I don't want my my my... Yeah, whatever it is that it, I, I'm supposed to I suppose it's not so much get. equality, it's social justice, right? Yeah. Social economic uh, uh, justice. There are a lot of issues uh, that touch, uh, uh, cut across uh, race and religion. We talk about social economic uh, development, such as uh, social security 
uh, mm. uh, development. Uh, that the Prime Minister spoke about it yesterday, raising the raising yeah. the floor, and that has been the topic of discussion a lot in the policy workshop. Build a yeah. more resilient uh, social security system, and I think this is a very uh, good uh, discussion uh, to have. But it must be an, again, I will it must be an honest discussion, mm-hmm. and I've always said this: social security cannot be a political. Uh, 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 cannot be championed just for its political purposes by whoever was in power that particular time. It is a long process, um, uh, but we have to start now in reforms of social mm-hmm. social security. Probably if if everyone has better social protection, and we will be happier, and uh, we will talk about something else. I mean, yeah. uh, you know, the way, the way I like to think of it, right? Um, you know. Politics is really simple. It's like, uh, you know, Rachel and Joseph, right? Okay. okay. So I'm going to go to Joseph and say, Joseph, Rachel is it's very unfair. Rachel is taking everything that belongs to you. Mm-hmm. And Ami, so you should vote for me to, mm-hmm. to stop that from <laughs> okay. happening. All right? So <laughs> Ami is going to go to Rachel okay. and say, Rachel, you know, Joseph is taking everything from you mm-hmm. and it's terribly unfair. You should vote for me so that I can stop this from happening. Yeah. I think there's another old saying like, uh, politics is the art of telling the rich and the poor that you'll protect them from the other. <laughs> you know, mm. you just, you, mm-hmm. that, 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 I mean, so it, it, it's easy because most mm-hmm. people think their life is suffering mm-hmm. and they're suffering in the world and they want something to blame. Yeah. I, mean, I, I believe that, I have great faith in Malaysians, right? I believe that they are willing to be, you know, uh, fair players in a fair game. Sure. Right? They are willing to play by fair rules to, you know, to work, you know, to, to, to earn their keep and to, you know, to, 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 to do their partner. Mm-hmm. They don't, they, they want to live in a fair world. But everyone around them is telling them, eh, 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 this is not fair because the other fellas taking everything that belong to you. Mm-hmm. Then, then the, I mean, and it can be, it comes an arms race. Yeah. If, if he's saying that to them, I don't say that to my fella, then how am I going to compete, right? So that's, that's why well, we... Probably if you, if you use that analogy, then we need to remind them of mutually assured destruction. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You talk about this, I talk about that, the country goes down. No, we shouldn't yeah. do that. Mm. <laughs> but, but ultimately, uh, Anira, coming to you then, you know, after all is said and done, coming... Uh, after the state elections on the 12th of August, do you see a better Malaysia from there on then? The fact that we are talking about 3R, we are making a matter out of this, we are concerned about people when they talk about religion, about race, and ultimately about royalty as well. Will anything change for the better, to your opinion, moving forward after the state elections? I think it is a purge that is necessary for Mm -hmm. Malaysia at this point. Um, I, whether it's whether there's a better outcome, I think that's yet to be seen. But it definitely is a transition, and transition and change is painful, right? So that's where you see we have the we have a lot more political parties than we've ever had before. Um, we also have a lot more new candidates um, that we've ever had before. Not even not just from the new parties, but even yep. from the existing big ones, right? Yep. Even the PHBN coalition, they've fielded many new faces, and it's because of what has happened in the past. So there are also deeper conversations and also bolder conversations like with the fact that we're having it now. So I think there's definitely good steps mm-hmm. um, which will ultimately lead, I feel, to a better Malaysia that we would like to have in the future. Um, but immediately after state elections, I'm not sure whether that outcome will be you know, positive because no matter what happens, I think there will still be a lot of noise mm-hmm. because even within... There's already in, there's already conflict or tension within the bigger political parties such as in Barisan National, even Pakatan Harapan. What is the future of these parties going to look like yep. um, in the future? Uh, people are already also questioning: Is Muda going to last? Mm-hmm. Right. So it's really about you know there's, it's the purge. So we, these are the transitions that needs to go forward. It may they may die, they may you know fizzle out, or they may yep. grow bigger. We don't know, but it's definitely a move in the right direction in yeah. fostering a Malaysia that we want, at least for this yeah. generation. Did you watch the movie The Perch? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, yes. I do hope we, we already said we don't want violence. Yeah. So that's where we, we draw the line. We pray to the God Almighty that we do not need to come to that. Ladies and gents, it has been such an eventful, such an insightful conversation, a discussion that we're having down here talking about the Finding Middle Ground for three hour conversations. I have to thank all of our panelists over here. Once again, we have uh, Nat, uh, Nathaniel Tan, the coordinator for Project Bangsa Malaysia. We also have Amir Farid Rahim, the KRA Group Politics risk consultant. That's a mouthful, but congratulations. Sir. And we also have Arina Najwa Ahmad Asaid, Bauer Group Asia Director, discussing about this 3R. Again, it is not reduce, recycle and 
uh, what the other are. Again, there's too many abbreviations, guys. But whatever it is, what's important right now is for all, and I mean all of Malaysians out there, to be respectful, to be responsible, and to be relatable as well, especially by uh, Farid uh, Ame just now. Because again, at the end of the day, it is for us Malaysians, it is for ourselves, and who better to make ourselves better than the people around us. Whatever it is, be smart, be safe, be, be awesome. Because again, we need to do that for the unity of Malaysia at least. That's all for tonight's episode. Make sure you guys do follow us on all our socials of Sina Daily because again, as, as mentioned, we are transparent. All the latest updates are on all our socials on Instagram, TikTok, uh, Facebook, as well as the website as well. Don't forget the YouTube channel too. So that's it for now. Hope you guys enjoyed this particular edition. My name is Mio Adlan. See you on the next one. Happy weekend. Take care. Bye.